Israel. But let me ask you this, just about in terms of um, Israel, which is there is this argument, um, and I'm interested in your view on it, and I have argued this myself before and believe it. Um, I'm just going to give the truncated version, which is the cost of defending and giving aid to Israel is measured by far more than the billions of dollars that leave the American taxpayer and get transferred to that foreign country. The real cost is that there are however many people around the world, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, who hate the United States and hate it so much and feel so aggrieved by it that they're willing to risk their own lives in order to attack us. Um, that's the cop problem of terrorism. And that there are millions of more people in that part of the world who aren't necessarily willing to engage in violence, but who are supportive of that mindset, who give it aid, who enable it, who provide cover for it. And there are lots of reasons why this mindset against the United States exists. One is that we've been interfering in their countries for a long time, supporting their dictators, as we're seeing. Another is that we, you know, send drone attacks and all the things that you were defending earlier, we killed their civilians. But that a major reason for it among a lot of these people, and I don't mean Osama bin Laden or the al-Qaeda leadership, but a lot of Muslims who have this level of anti-American animus is because we so steadfastly support Israel, which they perceive to be oppressors of um, Muslims. And of course, we just isolated ourselves last week um, by being the only country out of the 15 on the, on the Security Council, including France and Britain, to oppose the resolution condemning settlements that we ourselves have always agreed are wrong and, and, and illegal. And that says that to the, to the that world that we separate our, ourselves from this. Can, isn't there a pretty big cost beyond the money to so steadfastly and outside of the world consensus supporting Israel this closely? I, I think that that is an example of something the American foreign policy community or parts of it have talked itself into in the face of all of the evidence. And let me just let me just point to um, what I think is really the definitive counterexample. Um, the the place in the world where Islamic radicalism is the greatest danger uh, to everybody, to itself, to the neighbors, to the planet, is Pakistan. Um, that's uh, that that is both both the world's most Islamically radical country, at least if the pew polls are right. Um, it's one with a tremendous problem with the reliability of the security services plus nuclear weapons. Pa How many of the 9/11 attackers were Pakistani? None were, but uh, but boy, I mean, just give give them a chance. How many how many of the twenty of the twenty first century problems traceable to Pakistan? That's where the nuclear technology flows from. Um, it is a huge. It is the most potent source of trouble. Uh, in not Saudi Arabia. At Pakistan, Saudi Arabia does not have nuclear weapons. We do not have to worry that a, Sa a Saudi nuclear weapon will find itself into the wrong hands, and we do have to worry that very much about, about Pakistan. Um, and I think uh, and and. Here's where, here's where I'm going with this. Um, in, in Pakistan, uh, the grievance, the radicalizing, their external grievance, onto which they project what I think are the real drivers of all this, but, but the, the, the territorial issue onto which they uh, focus their uh, uh, anger is the issue not of the Palestinians, but of Kashmir. Um, now, the United States would not say we are going to allow our policy on, who, uh, on Kashmir um, Whatever the merits of the policy, we're not going to allow our policy to be driven by the need by, by the need to um, prevent radicals in Pakistan from having a talking point. Uh, we are we form our policy on Kashmir in the American interest, and yet Kashmir is a huge bone uh, bone of contention uh, between India and Pakistan. And we have stayed, we have wisely said we're going to respect the status quo, which has put most of Kashmir inside of India. Um, because our relationship with India is, is that important. Um, and because we don't think the Pakistani radicals happen to be right. And the mere fact that they are angry at us and threaten us with violence is no reason to give in to them um, on an issue where we think they're wrong. And I think Palestine and Israel are exactly the same thing. I don't think, I don't think it's at all true that the reason for radicalism in the Arab world has any, and the Muslim world has anything very much to do with Israel. I, really? I very nothing? Hard to imagine nothing? Things that, not, it has very little to do with, like, the reason why, you think if you ask Muslims who are hostile to the United States what their reasons for that hostility are, you think very few of them would list our support for Israel um, as part of their, their principal reasons? Do you really believe some, that? Some, some might. Well, let me put this way. I think there are, a lot of things, there are a lot of other things that they might list that we would never consider altering. Uh, because we'd say, well, that's something. Sorry, you don't like it. That's something we're entitled. Uh, we're entitled. Like what? Like what? 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 What are, what are a couple of those? Uh, they, uh, they don't like it that we put scantily clad women on MTV. Um, and they don't like that. 
Uh, they uh, they don't like uh, they don't like it that Lara Logan is in their square, not with uh, a cloth over her head. They don't like. So it. they hate us for our freedoms. You're saying? Uh, I think that they I think they are struggling with the consequences of their failed transition to modernity. Um, and I think like in, like in, in, okay, in the scheme of what what accounts for anti-American radicalism and anti-American hostility in that part of the world. You actually think that the presence of scantily clad women on television, which, by the way, is something that countless countries have. I mean, I live most of the time in Brazil. There's more scantily clad women on their television than there is on American television, and I don't recall seeing an al-Qaeda attack here. But in the scheme of things, like the scantily clad women, how do you think that compares in terms of generating American hostility, anti-American hostility well, to, most, things most, like, most like, to things like propping up their dictators, invading their countries, dropping bombs on them, and supporting the most Israel's as, steadfast? As you know, again, you we're, going through, we're going through now here very familiar ground. But the most important theoretician of all of this, who was an Egyptian, um, I think the thing that, that locked in his hostility to the United States was his dislike of a square dance he saw in Greeley, Colorado in the years after World War II, which he saw as just summoning every Are you talking about Mohammed Atta? No, uh, uh, Said Qutb. Oh, okay. Uh, he wrote that. That was like that's his sort of Proustian Madeline that galvanized his anti-Americanism. Let me put it this way: I, if if the economy of Egypt had been growing at ten percent a year since World War II, um, I don't think that that um, this uh, and if the system were represented, I think that this rage against Israel would have faded away. And I think in, in some ways, um, it meant, uh, that I mean, it's a complicated problem, obviously. Um, I think the anti-Israel feeling in the Arab world has been a great destroyer of the Arab world itself. I think if they'd been able to get past it, uh, I think they'd be richer and stable and freer today than they are. But all of which is to say, that's, in the end, you know, this is about what the American policy is going to be, and um, you know, that we didn't we didn't just, we didn't decide to stop attacking West Germany because the Soviets didn't like it. We're not going to abandon uh, India because Pakistan doesn't like it, and we don't abandon Taiwan because China doesn't like it. Um, the great powers have their own interests. Um, and uh, we've got, like, howling animals here that are going to... Uh... Yeah, I was going to say the record to reflect, usually my dogs are to blame, but my very well-disciplined dogs have remained shockingly these, quiet, these and that well is from your well. pack. All right. Um, 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 and they, they're, they're getting noisier and noisier. So if you want to take, like, the last 10 seconds to, to have the final say, and I'll go d discipline these animals. Yeah, I would just say I agree with you that we should determine our policy based on our interest and not simply accommodate what people don't like, but I think our interest is in um, trying to decrease the amount of anti-American hostility that fuels terrorism, which in turn causes us to fight these endless wars and suffer endless erosions of civil liberties. And one way that we could do that is by being a much more even-handed player um, in the Middle Eastern conflict rather than constantly doing Israel's bidding, um, protecting them with UN vetoes and the minute they have increased costs, thinking about how the American taxpayer has to subsidize that. I think I don't think we should do that because there's a moral component to it, although there is. I think it's in our interest to stop being so tied to the hip to Israel and having all of their conflicts and their enemies become ours. Um, Last thought. Just, anyway, I, I'm always yep. worried about, about taking the advice of the people who hate me about how what I can do to make them like me. I think they are they are maybe not uh, going to be honest arbiters um, of, of that question and their intentions. And if they hate me, they're they're, uh, they're they're not looking out for my welfare when they give me advice. All right. True, but, but, I, but, but I think the, the issue is if people if people are blowing up your planes and your buildings, sometimes it might make sense to think: Is there anything that we're doing? to them that's causing them to want to do that to us. That just seems like a rational calculus for, for to, to engage in, um, in my view. But anyway, Dog are we at time. our end? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so long, Glenn. Good to talk to you as ever. Good to talk to you. Bye, bye David.